Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So, guys, do fossil fuels really come from fossils? That's a big question. That is a huge question. Without a doubt, this planet's been running on oil and gas. We see it. It's just everywhere. It's part of our way of life. And, uh, you know, if you've been paying for gas in California, you're paying $4 a gallon. It's incredible prices there. Uh, and just think about the money that is brought in by this industry across the planet. Think about the control grid in, the, in effect all around this planet, all controlled by oil and gas. How much money it brings in, how much power is there with those that have reserves, those that have the ability to manipulate the resources. And, you know, that's really what we're looking at when we're looking at this is, is the potential for so much power and, and wealth. And we see there are many extremely wealthy countries that exert a lot of power and influence on the world simply because of this resource. You know, the oil and gas industry is a huge industry. And so we're told... That basically, once upon a time, dinosaurs and even cavemen and algae and bacteria and plants and all sorts of animals, well, they all just basically died and they go down into the soil and they get compacted. And over time, you see they uh, basically exist in these layers in between these layers of rock in either the state of oil or, or gas on top of it. This is like what we've been told, but you know, so much of the science that we have been told has been rewritten time and time again. And daily now, discoveries are coming in that basically tell us, you know, everything you learned in high school is worthless. Everything you learned in college is worthless in so many ways as constantly science is being rewritten. And so this little part here says fossil fuels do not necessarily come from dinosaurs, but they do come from decayed plant and animal remains from the ocean from the time of dinosaurs, as well as other organic life. So, you know, that's that's the big key here, organic. So obviously, you know, the Earth has had a lot of life on it and, you know, we might debate the time frame. Uh, some creationists claim it's only 6000 years old. Uh, I don't think there's really evidence for that. If anything, perhaps things are on a longer time scale than what we've been told. But then again, it's really, really hard uh, to you know gather enough evidence because there's so much conflictory and contradictory information out there. So when we see something like this statement, Titan has more oil than Earth, and Titan is a moon of Saturn. What are we to make of that statement? Is that a statement of disclosure then? That there's more life out there on other planets as well. And if Titan, which is not as big as the Earth, has more oil than the Earth, what is that saying? How much life has there been on Titan for how long? And so this is from space.com, and this is 10 years old. So this is right out there. It's been out there in our face for a long time. If we start putting you know, two and two together, what are they really saying? Well, you know, are they saying that there's life out there and there's life that has been there for, you know, perhaps hundreds of millions of years, if not billions of years on Titan? Perhaps there's life still there. Or are they telling us that the whole way oil comes about and gas comes about is not what we've been told. So which one is wrong? Yeah, which one right here is is not the truth? That's the big question. As we know, there's been so much pressure uh, on people in general about carbon emissions, you know, and wanting to tax carbon emissions and also just the fact that, you know, we have to get away from fossil fuels, but at the same time, we don't see the industries moving away very fast. And of course, there's countries that don't want this to happen, period. And we know there's been so much suppressed technology uh, because we can find patents all over the place for all sorts of different uh, ways of making energy way more efficiently. There, there are car, cars that you know, run on water. They run on hydrogen. Uh, obviously, now we have a lot of hybrids. There's electric cars. Of course, we're starting to get more into solar and wind power as well. 
And, you know, there are some fascinating patents out there for free energy uh, devices as well. And there's the thought that, you know, perhaps since the time of Tesla, almost 100 years ago, there's been free energy devices. And, uh, of course, it would be suppressed because there is so much money to be made in oil and gas. And there's so much money to be made in science that apparently is wrong. But, of course... Obviously, the truth is always suppressed. That's what we keep seeing. So how could Titan possibly have more oil than Earth? And, you know, as we see here, this is out of NASA. Titan surface organics surpass oil reserves on Earth. And, you know, Titan is a curious one. Saturn's orange moon Titan has hundreds of times of more li liquid hydrocarbons than all the known oil and natural gas reserves on Earth, according to new data. And so they say the hydrocarbons rain from the sky, collecting in vast deposits that form lakes and dunes. Fascinating. So there's unlimited resources out there. What do you bet, it, for those of you that believe in the secret space program, that you know there's basically all sorts of mining and uh, processing facilities out there already. Do you think that already exists out there? Do you think the resources are being harvested? Is that where some of the trillions of dollars of missing taxpayer money has gone uh, to fund projects like the secret space program? And, you know, because when you look at just even the military budget, which the United States is, is, is it's more than the next 10 countries combined. And yet, they always say we're in need of upgrading our military. And there's ever more vast amounts of money going into the military. But is it going into the military for planes, for tanks, for battleships, for armaments? Or is it going into other things? Is, is it going into uh, the secret space program, for instance? And as well as so much countless funds that are being probably diverted from the $150 hammers and, you know, $20 nails that they are always procuring, how much of it's going into projects that we don't have a clue about? And now we're seeing ships in the skies that are doing uh, things that none of our tech is supposed to be able to do, but perhaps it is mostly our stuff just you know advanced technology that has not been shown to us you know how many lies have we been given and, and where is there any truth that ever comes out of the mainstream that's another question altogether so what is the deal with the oil is it tr truly a different type of process as you know some believe some some do believe uh, that oil is not necessarily from it's not necessarily a quote unquote fossil fuel but that it's actually something that comes about by a natural process from deep within the earth and if that's the case then the whole idea of peak oil and shortages is just another way to amp prices because perhaps you know as it's taken out it's just replaced with with new oil what if it's kind of the blood of the earth? You know, as we we need to maintain a certain amount of blood in our body. And when we bleed out, as we take in more nutrients, take in more food, more water, more blood is formed. Perhaps it's the same thing with the earth. But then again, if that is the case, then what are we doing to the earth when we're taking out the oil? We see in the fracking zones, you have a whole bunch of earthquakes now showing up. Oklahoma wasn't always a place that has a half a dozen at least earthquakes a day, but they are now. There's always a, at least four to eight quakes in Oklahoma every single day, and it's because of fracking. And now we're seeing quakes over towards El Paso, and we went through that area just six months ago. And, you know, there's fracking everywhere you can see. There's oil being taken from the ground. So... What are we really doing to the planet in that case as well? Are we not perhaps speeding up our own demise when the great quakes come, when Cascadian quake comes and then San Andreas concurrently or soon thereafter? The energy will roll towards Yellowstone, eventually go into the new Madrid, which will make a mess of the entire country. And so now with all the fracking going on, 
the effects of these big quakes are going to be amplified many, many times. There are so many fracking locations all through southern Colorado and northern New Mexico, it boggles the mind. Just fields as long as you can see. So another question is, what are we truly doing to ourselves in this, as well as the planet? And will the planet, again, strike back at us because we are behaving like a virus once again upon the planet? So the lies are huge, and we've been told a whole bunch of, at least we could say, mistruths, um, falsehoods, or we could just call them for what they are, and basically say that they're lies all about controlling and power and wealth and maintaining power in the hands of the few. So what are your thoughts on this? What do you think about the fact that Titan has more oil than Earth? And do you think that fossil fuels really come from fossils? As always, my friends, I thank you for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi. Uh, there are some videos that go up on Patreon that are not on YouTube. So join us over there, support the channel, and also see some other videos on stuff we can't talk about uh, as in-depth as over here. And I want to thank you guys for being part of our family. I look forward to your comments on this. As always, God bless and namaste.